Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jamie Schenker Passero. I'm the Associate Director of the Temple Small Business Development Center. And you are here for our rescheduled event. So thank you so much for bearing with us. You know those storms were pretty rough last week. Hopefully you all were not impacted, but we're here for the rescheduled Keeping Hospitality in Touch with Touchless Service. This is a webinar series intended to support small tourism and hospitality businesses as they navigate these unprecedented times as a result of COVID-19. By exploring topics related to operations, health and safety, marketing, risk management, contingency planning and innovation, we hope to provide meaningful and relevant insight in relation to current small business issues to help you understand and respond to the changing landscape. This series is brought to you by the Center of Excellence for Hospitality Resilience, a joint initiative of Temple University's School of Sport, Tourism, and Hospitality Management, and Temple Small Business Development Center. The, small, the Temple SBDC is here to support your business through our virtual learning like this and through consulting, which we're doing over the phone or via Zoom. So please uh, reach out if you have any questions about that. Uh, we have participants muted for today. If you have questions, we encourage you to put them in the chat box and we will get to them either um, during the presentation or afterwards. So thank you so much, Lulu. We really appreciate your time and I'm going to hand it over to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jamie, for the introduction and good afternoon, everybody. And it's my great pleasure here uh, to present this webinar on keeping hospitality in touch with touching service. Uh, my name is Lulu. I'm assistant professor of school sport, tourism and hospitality management at Temple University. So I think the background of this webinar is with this new precautions taking place amidst the pandemic, we have seen due to the social distancing, we keep the safety and health measures and we can and help and uh, wondering and where our personal touch has gone and we have raised this concern that whether we could still maintain that high touch experience and with this touchless contactless new environment amidst this pandemic. So essentially this is the original idea for this webinar. So basically I will walk through the nuts and bolts about hospitality touch. What exactly is it? And then what are some areas that right now have been in their mind in terms of delivering this human touch and hospitality touch and more importantly some alternative or creative solutions we can battle this challenge amidst the COVID-19. So let me get started. So first of all what does a personal touch really mean? We talk about hospitality and we try to differentiate ourselves from any other services. We're not just a service. So delivering a human touch or personal touch, hospitality touch, is the competitive edge of our industry. So here I'm going to quote uh, the founder and CEO from Treat Them Right, um, Mr. Phil Barono. So service is the things that you do for people, you do for customer, but hospitality is how you feel, how you make them feel while you're doing the things. So it's about how customers feel about this experience. So essentially those benefits we're trying to create is the feelings. It's the feelings of being personally connected, touched through a memorable experience. So now centering around the idea of feeling, then I will delve into what exactly a personal touch could mean or could look like. So therefore, uh, we have a few of agendas for this webinar. So I'll discuss what is hospitality touch, what exactly it means. And then given the current situation and with the new precautions, what are some undermined touch points? So simply put, where are some places we feel like we can't really deliver that human touch? We feel like there are challenges. And then propose some alternative solutions or new ideas, and we can still keep our hospitality touch with contactless services. All right, without further ado, I'll jump into the first. So now, if we can recall our best memories in the past, you know, when business operate in the regular term, and one of your best experiences that you feel like during the interaction with this hospitality staff or over any encounter that I truly feel I had a great experience. So now let's take a moment to think about that moment. I feel I'm personally touched. I have that sense and I had a great experience over that interaction. And now 
after you recall that piece of memory and then let's think about what exactly about that person that makes you feel that. So maybe as we can see, oh, maybe the smile, okay, right? A warm, really genuine smile or the tone of voice when they communicate with you or the body language they use that make you feel like, okay, we're friends. We're not just a business customer. We know each other, right? And we can have some personal conversation. And then leads to verbal conversation, right? The exactly the language they use to communicate with you. You're not just talking to a reception. You're talking to a person. It's like a friend, right? And, or some other services that they provide to you make you feel like I'm beyond a customer. I'm not one of the customers. I'm the guest. So we have a one-on-one -on -one connection. So why is so important? Because human interaction has been the core channel that we try to deliver that personal touch because literally you, right during the human interaction um, it's very important that we we can derive that personal touch that uh, hospitality sincerity through this interaction but if we really boils down to the bottom what is essentially the benefits that we experience through that personal interaction so essentially we're talking about the core characters or the key benefits of hospitality touch, what it feels like. So is the warmth, is the authenticity, is the genuine care, the high levels of comfort, high levels of genuine care, understanding your needs. And there is a person to person connection. Rather than I'm talking to a big firm, a big merchant, we have a personal connection. I am recognized, I am special. Right, and the business or that person knows about me, and those sense of feelings, those sense of benefits, carry through this human interaction with this person, with this uh, service staff. So I might be going a little bit technical here because I really want to us uh, to think about what this essential benefits through a hospitality touch is. Human interaction, the only channel we can deliver that hospitality touch. We might explore something new, right? Given all these challenges. So then let's, think, let's walk through why this human interaction is so important to deliver the hospitality touch. So according to the uh, research conducted among hospitality scholars, and we recognize it's critically important for business, for hospitality business to maintain this personal touch because personal interaction, this personal touch can spark positive emotion of the customer. So why emotion is so important? Because that will directly lead to a memorable experience. It's beyond just a satisfaction. It's beyond a completion of a transaction. It's gonna stick with the customer. It's gonna be in their memory. And then what eventually it will lead to, the customer can develop a true emotional connection with the brand, with your property. And the more importantly, customers trust. So why this is so important is now, I think we can revisit a basic concept of what's the difference between our loyal customers and simply repeated us. Because obviously we want loyal customers, which means we have emotional bond. Even though we have you know, downsides and we have to raise many price or we have to cut down some services, our customers still follow us. We have a true relationship rather than simply repeat purchase from that. That is what we call a pseudo customer loyalty, right? And what, why trust is so important so once customers deliver trust towards your brand, you know, in a regular term, yes, they're, gonna be, they're going to be committed. They're going to continue to maintain this relationship. And more importantly, when your business make a mistake, when you have a service failure, things like that, your customers are still more likely to stay with you. So that's why, you know, through this whole logical chain, it's so important to deliver this human touch, to, to deliver hospitality touch, simply because the end outcome it can create on our brand. So now going back to the original idea, human interaction might be the important channel to deliver hospitality touch, but essentially how we can make customers feel like they are, there is a personal touch, they have to feel warmth and high levels of care, the warmth and also authenticity. It's not a fake smile. It's not a random, 
um, service offered from a uh, manuscript, from, uh, from a uh, training manual. And the behavior is pretty much strict. It's not like that. Like they genuinely care about you as a friend. They understand your needs and, and, and are able to observe and react towards that, right? And next one is personalization. So based on your needs and requests, your character and what I they can treat you differently from other customers. And eventually it will make us feel this person or this business knows me. I'm not one of their customers, I'm their guest. So we really appreciate this one-on-one -on -one connection. So bottom line is, even though with these challenges with social distancing, we have difficulty of having that normal interaction with our favorite employees, with our favorite folks. And, but as long as long we can deliver hospitality touch through other platforms, through other touch points, we should be able to maintain or even create a new version of hospitality in this new era. So this is the idea. So next one, where can the personal touch come from? So just the following of what we just discussed earlier, you know, we realize it's so important to deliver warmth, authenticity, personalization, and make me feel or make the customer feel the business knows about me, then where can this sense come from? Where can this feeling come from? Now it moves to the next important point, which is touch points. So apparently in the regular term, uh, we appreciate employee customer interaction, right? That few, the true human interaction, um, that conversation you had, that personal connection, um, and that um, real experience on site, okay, over the counter. But however, there are many other touch points we can still explore, right? So simply put, what is a touch point? So essentially a touch point is any interaction, even include those encounters where there's no physical interaction, like a digital platform or your social media or whatever platform you use to engage with the customer. Any, any interaction that you have with the customer that might alter the perception of your brand, your service, your product, we call it a touch point. So why it's important to recognize the rest of touch points because those are the areas we can really rethink, renovate our hospitality touch through other channels. Because simply the idea is, looks like currently human interaction has been discouraged and we want to minimize direct contact for the safety and health measures concerns which is a priority, but it doesn't stop us to explore other things, right? While still maintaining this human interaction. All right. So now let's look at right now. It look, looks like we have this idea now while maintaining this human interaction uh, with precaution taking place, we're trying to explore other areas. And then let's look at right now, what's missing in terms of human interaction. Right, with this new precautions, social distancing. So the end of my touch points uh, due to social distancing. So just a really quick overview. I think this really um, becomes familiar to us. So the picture on the left hand is a normal, right? Is a normal hospitality touch. And just try to recall your one of your favorite hotels, your favorite local store, uh, your local shop, and you have a really good relationship. You know them, you know the owner for years. And when they interact with the customer, you know, that smile on his or her face, you know, that warm hug, that conversation can goes on and on and on, right? So that kind of feeling really, you know, makes hospitality different. That is a normal. But now, looks like what has been happening right now, the new normal. Of course, first of all, we have all kinds of different barriers. We wear a mask, which means your smile is covered and you have physical barrier psychologically, yes, you, you are less likely to engage in conversation, right? And also because we want to minimize on-site time, during the safety concerns, we tend to make a conversation really short. And even some places we understand the power of technology, we, do, we use kiosks, we use other devices, looks like we really minimize that human interaction with this new normal, right? And in a different picture. So the normal is we have 
a large group, right? We gather with our folks and we have fun and we even uh, interact with the server in a different table or even by simply observing people having you know, a really pleasant experience that human connection makes it hospitable or make that personal touch. But the new normal, we have to control the capacity, we have to adjust the new normal. So a lot of things becomes, and uh, it becomes really um, difficult right now. Okay, let's move to the next point. Then given all these challenges that have really undermined the human touch, what can we do? Right. So next, I'm going to list a few examples or a few areas that uh, either I found is really interesting, uh, either draw from field practices or just drawing on the idea of how to communicate hospitality touch. Let's brainstorm some really interesting examples how we can still maintain that high levels of touch. So first of all, on human interaction, as we said, human interaction, we're not let it go. Right? We're not going to let it go. It's really important. But Given the new normal right now with the mask on, can you still feel that smile? Yes, we can. Yes, we can see that person, but it's difficult to see that smile, especially from a distance, right? So given the idea of having a mask, so it looks like this has really created a problem. I know a lot of business owners are finding some clear masks or other ways because we understand how important that genuine smile is. But maybe a different idea to have to put a spin on the mask. So it masks up our smile, but there is a different, there is alternative strategy. We can still put that smile back on, right? And according to some basic psychology literature, you know, human uh, emotion is contagious. So if people can see a smile, right? Can see a smile and that kind of emotion can be communicated. That's why sometimes, you know, when you text each other with a text message, you have an emoji for that, right? You have a smiley face because it helps you to deliver that emotion. And what our example that I found interesting is, this is from a Belgium, is I think uh, one of the restaurants called Lodge over there. Their employee actually, they took a uh, picture of themselves and they customized their mask because Many business owners over there realize it's really important to show their employees' face. You know, they, they smile, that true emotion is important. So that's why when they put on a mask, it's from their face. So these are the things that I find really interesting, maybe a solution that we can go. And the next one is a style of communication. So not only about emotion that we see each other face, but human interaction is also about communication, right? Our text messaging, like when you are chatting with the employees online uh, or we always order through Instagram or other digital platforms or their website, you have a working with them. So the style of communication also makes a significant difference how people feel about you. So essentially, if you have a very personalized style, like a personal style, which means you are more friend-like, you tend to talk a little bit more, you're informal, you're a little bit casual, um, you're treating a person like a friend, right? So that is what we call a personal style versus a professional style. So it's interesting, this is from actually a, uh, the most recent publication that I had with my colleagues uh, published in a business journal. We found that if the service staff engage in a more personal, style of communication, customers are more likely to develop trust. So the, your style of communication does make an influence. So for example, I use a text picture right here um, to give you an idea what it means by saying personal, right? So as you can read, I'm gonna read some for you. Um, for example, the service provider says, oh, we have amazing food in here and their local restaurant. I really strongly recommend the barbecue place. It's really good. And then, um, they can also give you some tips around the local area. So simply you'll feel like you're not just talking in front of a person, uh, in front of a service personnel, like you know this person, right? And it, some other studies also show that uh, instead of using the service staff as a term for all, you can actually put the staff's name there, like who texted, right? The person, a true name can also deliver that personal touch. So those are also going to be useful for communication. Body language, same thing. Yes, we are trained to be hospita hospitable and uh, professional, uh, but overly formal, okay, professional body language may not deliver that personal sense. So sometimes we can be casual, right? Give the thumbs up and make it less formal. Of course, depends on your scale of service. 
let's say if your luxury hotel brand, you want to deliver that sophisticated image, that maybe not apply to you. But just a sense that your employee's body language, even though they wear the mask, can make sure that your customer can feel that personal connection with them. Right? So let's move to the next, the messenger. Uh, I think this is not surprising to us. Sometimes we we'll want to show um, our sincere appreciation for our guests, especially when they have a special occasion, they have an anniversary, or um, to simply appreciate their loyalty, staying with you when they come all the time, right? And instead of sending out just a, an email or a coupon, things like that, can we handmade a gift for them? Can we craft a letter with a hand note, right? Handwritten note rather than print them out. So these little things can also infuse very strong personal touch. So for example, if your restaurant really wants to appreciate your customer and offer them a free dessert or meal, and you know, it might be a good idea to have the name of, of the chef who made it, okay? How about the personal communication? If your product is handmade, not mass produced, let them know, you know, what made it special for you. So this will make that click. Okay, you are special, we make this for you. And by having the names of the service staff who create this experience, you can also build building that connection. Your customers, your customer is connecting with another person behind the scene, right? So those things, create the right messenger also matters. All right, so is there a question, Jim? All right, looks like now. Okay, so let's continue. So the next topic is let's move to other places. So the next idea I really want us to realize is with this new era of pandemic, right? We are operating in the midst of a pandemic and we're talking about that personal touch. So essentially one of that, we need to accommodate guest needs. Then what becomes the new emerging needs is the guest are concerned about their safety and health. So if you participated in one of our previous webinar, we uh, report foundings from a national study uh, looking at people's like one of the, you know, the top rated factors that people will return to their local business, what comes on top, the most important factors. And the customers would indicate, you know, health safety measures for their workers. So customer will also feel safe and then implement social distancing and then come the third is the product server and so on. So it is clear to us customers are very concerned about health and safety. Now, this is their new emerging needs. Talking about going back to the idea about hospitality touch, right? We're trying to create a sincere, authentic care to accommodate their needs. So now what comes to top is their safety concerns. All right, so holding that idea, let's put a personal touch, let's put a personal touch spin on their top concern. So I know a lot of places right now, uh, let's say when they serve the customer, when customer arrival, they want to minimize contact, of course, and even some uh, hotels or other businesses, they offer a PPE kit, right? So that is really good practice. Of course, it shows that we take care and we take responsibility of, of our guests uh, health and safety, and to put a personal spin to make it more special, maybe you can put a guest name for it, right? Or collect a guest needs prior to their arrival, or something special about that person to make sure they're still on your mind, right? To deliver that authentic touch by accommodating their top concern. A next example, so this is the restaurant from Amsterdam. Um, Again, given the idea and the difficulty of operating in a social distancing world, and they're trying to maximize the outdoor space, and but they also realize, you know, customers' experience, customers' interaction with their service staff is critically important for the experience. So this is what they did. They create the first three pictures are from the same right restaurants. So they create a greenhouse. So it's very, so everyone, all, all the group will sit in one house. They can see each other, right? You can still feel that your customers are around you. And when their employees come here, I don't have a photo for that, but I remember one of their pictures, their employees can still see their customers face to face. They have interact, they have a conversation. It just uh, with a barrier of the greenhouse. So 
they have a really nice design. It really doesn't make them feel like they're losing that touch. In a different way, it feels romantic, it really supports their brand. So uh, instead of touching the place and things like that, they create like a long arm, like a wood board to deliver that experience. So we can see that they're trying to minimize the difficult areas that you that you don't feel comfortable, but really leverage it, okay, to make it a more new uh, experience that customer will enjoy. So without uh, going through the hassles, maybe there's something to think about. The last one is very similar idea, right? Instead of making that physical barrier kind of awkward and maybe make it as give it a little bit of design, right? It had a different romance added vibe into it. So customers can actually enjoy and without realizing the hassles. So next one, this is interesting. So we talk about in the new area, the emerging needs that we're trying for our customer, all their safety and health, right? So this is a new practice that we have found um, that actually, um, recently launched by the Montage Hotel, and they partnered with a medical health um, service provider, One Med Medical. So they provide a on-demand 24 seven digital health service. So if your guests are staying with them, not only during the stay, but also three days after, I think you still have the membership. So whenever you have a concern and uh, whenever you have COVID related questions and whatever, whenever you need their help and you can use the app, you can use their digital service. So they're there for you 24 seven. So this is basically the owner realize it is paramount that their customer feel safe. This is the, their top needs, top priority while they're staying with their business and that their employees also feel safe to do so. So now we really personalize the service, that we create alternative service in this new time of the pandemic, right? So there might be something, uh, uh, alternative idea that we can consider, okay? Giving the special needs for uh, health and safety, right? So next one is since we started talking about this virtual services and the new services coming out of this pandemic. So uh, next one, uh, let's talk about there are some maybe other digital format, di digital touch points that we can still create and communicate hospitality touch, right? As we talked about before, traditionally we heavily rely on uh, personal staff human interaction over the counter and de develop a relationship with a person and now since we have all other touch points let's say the product you offered right this little handmade or dessert or your hotel bedroom when your guests check in can you put their favorite magazine their favorite beverages things like that do you remember you use uh, a customer support system or customer technology um, support system and remember their needs when they check in next time in your service provider to them they can feel that sense right or completely digital format from your website from your social media site over the interaction between you and your guest from their mobile device, you can still leverage these channels to communicate with the guest to deliver your warmth, your authenticity, your personalized experience, and also eventually make guests know I'm recognized. It doesn't matter if I'm still here or I'm communicate with you digitally, right? So it's about the core benefits we are offering through hospitality. All right, so the next few examples may be centered around the digital devices, mobile apps. So since we're starting to move in mobile devices, and this is another um, example that I want to show you, is nowadays we want to minimize human interaction when guests check in or during the service, and but also we want to create a personalized experience. Simply put, we understand what they need. Right in in this new era, you know, guys, depending on their um, you know their personal needs, health situation, or occasion with their travel, with their trip, or with their dining experience, they may have some their personal personal preference, right? So there might be a good opportunity for us to really leverage on their personal needs. So, for example, what we can do is understand their needs, collect their information and then to make sure we're fully prepared about their imagined guest experience, guest journey, 
and then offer no time when they check in, right? We want to minimize the unnecessary film interaction, but really focus on the, the areas that we need. So we collect information beforehand to make sure we're well prepared and then minimize their time spent for check-in. And then leverage that experience collected, leverage that information collected beforehand to really personalize the experience. Let's say whether they have special requests with their rooms and that there are special requests with their food and beverage preferences, their medical, medical concerns or uh, sanitizing products or things like that, right? Or um, just basic needs from basic needs that they really need or they really wish our business could accommodate. We realize we use that data to really make that their experience different, right? We make that experience only for them. And this is not the end. So after collecting those business, we're trying to maintain a customer relationship. So this sense of a personalization should be continued. So what it means is that we take the record as the history and whenever they're staying up with us again, we remember them. So they will realize our business knows them. It doesn't not matter who exactly the person is serving them. Our business, we know them, right? I'm going to show you an example. Um, the recently we found uh, with this you know, new world, how, people, how business could operate this way. So this is a resort, Sun River Resort in Oregon. Uh, what they have done is they offer the curbside check-in. It's not only about the curbside check-in, it's they collect the guest needs, as I just said, collect the guest needs prior to guest arrival and understand everything they need. And then staff will check them in over the curb. And there's really no time and to make sure their needs are confirmed. And then they take the guest needs and make sure the guest requests are confirmed and also make sure they implement all the guest requests throughout their journey. So they really take advantage of the special time. Because during the special time, people get um, concern or anxiety during their travel or when they visit the business again. So um, might be a good opportunity for us to really show our genuine care, right? So this one, I think is not that new anymore. Um, if, you if you attended our last webinar, I think what me and my uh, colleagues were walking through some safety measures. Um, so one of the techniques that businesses are now using a lot is try to minimize human interaction, but going online. So this is an example. If, if you did not uh, attend a webinar, I can walk you through it again. Basically, this is a small smoothie shop and they really utilize their Instagram or their social media website to place orders and to customize their customer experience. So you directly interact way with them. So all their staff members will be right there for you. So you place your order and you have this direct interaction. And then you customize your order, you customize everything. So now the customization is the key. And then when you arrive on site, they're not forgetting about that personal touch. So having customized your experience online, and then when you are now seeing the personal staff to give you a thumbs up and confirm everything you're good to go and still create that, you know, um, traditional hospitality human touch. So they're trying to leverage, um, you know, both online and offline experience. So customer can, you know, pay in, your, in their car and pay with card, cash, Venmo. So this whole experience, it still feel like it's very personal. So basically saying, Nowadays, with a lot of contactless service, it doesn't really mean it has to be touchless, right? By touch, we really touch. We still can take all the channels we could to make sure customers feel that they are very important as an individual and not, not just one of the car customers. So next one, um, this has a different spin. So this is a virtual platform, a uh, virtual commerce network. Um, it's called a noble. So basically this virtual commerce network is created to provide an on-site experience, but there's no touch involved in it. So simply put, um, your business website or your other platform can be integrated into their platform. So your customers can use this one app to interact with your, let's say your restaurants, your hotel, customize the orders they want, and then communicate and then pay through their app again, and then uh, basically complete the whole experience where on site with this virtual commerce network. So they're on site there, but they, they don't need to go through all the hassles that they have to have unnecessary human interaction. Then why we think it's so important because first of all, 
the business indicate that I, one of the idea is they really want their personal staff to focus on the true experience, the true conversation that they can have with their customer uh, instead of chasing orders around, instead of have unnecessary uh, human touch to increase the risks. So that is the idea. So a lot of things can be done with this app and then customers can have um, can spend more quality time talking to your personal staff. And then over the order, it becomes a lot easier for customers to manure, and you can use that across different places, as long as those businesses are in the network. So you can have the same uh, very easy standardized uh, experience. Right? So of course, um, safety. So all these is uh, coming out of this new era of operation is uh, because of safety and health concerns with the customer. So I'm going to explain a little more. So basically what you're going to do, customers uh, can pull out the app and pull up the phone and select your business to browse through your food, let's say restaurant as an example, can interact and customize their order, can know what is going on, choose whatever they like, and then choose the table they're sitting in. So the restaurant person now will know which table to deliver the food and then add your tips, add your, um, to close up everything, whatever you need uh, during the transaction and the place through that app. So then you can enjoy a hassle-free experience. So the key idea is it's very easy for the customer and the try to minimize unnecessary human in interaction. So we can still have that customized experience. Customer can still customize their order and they can still um, enjoy that sense of uh, being taken care of because they don't want to have unnecessary uh, connection, human interaction over there. And also they still have time and to interact with your staff on site. So this is the idea. So this is a touchless, contact-free, uh, services, but on site. Alrighty. So as we um, move through the examples, I think right here, um, it becomes clear um, a lot of digital platforms that right now businesses are using um, is of course their website and of course their social media, but now and more and more, we're trying to connect with our customer with their mobile app. Right. So essentially, um, all the earlier discussion have led to an emerging trend. Customers are looking for a hyper connected guest experience and or alternatively, businesses are trying to create a hyper connected guest experience. So, for example, a lot of businesses use their mobile device not only for check in, check out, um, but also they place a lot of functions there. You can customize your special request. You can communicate with their personnel throughout the journey. So whenever you have a different request, it's like a special, they have a special list for you. So all through your mobile devices. So you don't have to run the risk of communicating uh, with customers, of communicating or interacting uh, with personal staff and try to minimize that human interaction, but also but still at the same time to feel that personal touch your request, your experience. So we're crafting this for you. I think even in the regular stage, even in the regular age and um, uh, research have shown, you know, most of travelers are already using their mobile device for most of their travel accessories. And in this new era, I think it won't be surprising that more and more people will opt in and the people feeling a lot safer with their own mobile devices, as long as we can show we are taking care of them and clearly, commu and clearly communicate, okay, even though it's through a digital platform. So this is uh, what we have seen recently. So here I think I'm going to uh, closing to the end. So just a really uh, a quick wrap up. I think essentially, um, yes, we are facing a challenge. Um, that our human touch, that high levels of personal interaction are undermined, are hurt. We feel that we can't, we can't hug our customer anymore. We really can't do more than air hug, right? And it's really a hurtful moment that we're losing that personal touch, but maybe not, right? And the point is we really need to understand what do we mean by hospitality touch? Maybe human interaction is not the only way to deliver that hospitality touch, 
right? Other digital platforms, we can still deliver and create those benefits as long as we make our customer feel warmth, that authenticity, not a fake smile, that authenticity and a genuine care for their immersion needs, make them feel special and make them feel that they are individually recognized. We are delivering a hospitality touch in this new era. So um, I won't delve into too much about social media because here I want to do a little bit promotion. Uh, I know our resilience still continues. So there is a upcoming webinar uh, by the Center for Hospitality Resilience. Uh, we're going to discuss a lot about stay relevant through COVID-19, planning your social media presence. So social media, yes, is another great touch point. You can continue to stay connected, continue to deliver that hospitality touch to our customer. Okay. So I hope this is going to be hope, uh, helpful um, for us to reimagine some new ideas, um, try to still keep that hospitality touch in touch in this really difficult time. And um, here, if you have some questions or thoughts that I can have a um, that I can provide further input, and you are also welcome to reach out to me directly after the webinar. And I'm more than happy to really imagine um, how to deliver hospitality touch and that personal feeling in this difficult time. All right, I think I'm going to uh, call it a day, Jamie. Uh, if I see there are some questions, so all right, thank you, Lulu. So, uh I'm going to ask for questions in the chat. Um, so you can take a minute to post there so Lulu can answer any questions. Um, I posed the question, would love to hear from any of the attendees about personal touches they have used in their businesses. So we'd love to hear those in the chat. I also posted our survey for today's webinar. So we are funded by the, uh, by the government, by the Small Business Administration and have some requirements and we need your feedback. So we would appreciate that. Um, and let's, we have one attendee who mentioned the Get Noble app and enjoying that, that's working for them. Um, but yeah, feel free to, to post um, either question or, or some personal touches that you've seen as a customer or you've used as a business. Um, I'm also going to post while you think of, of that, I'm gonna post a link to our resource page that we're updating daily that includes links to our future webinars, uh, past webinar recordings, and other resources that are particularly relevant to uh, being a business during COVID-19 with, uh, for example, the grants that are open right now. Um, for example, we are in the last round of the Pennsylvania COVID-19 um, Grant. So there's a link to that there. It's going to close on August 28th, I believe. Let me double check that. Um, yeah, it's closing then. So that's grants between 5,000 to 50,000. Um, so links, resources like that are what you can find on that page that I just sent over. Let's see. Questions or comments? I am not seeing any for today. Uh, so we do thank everyone for joining us. We thank Lulu for the presentation. Um, I will keep it open for one more minute if you do want to add anything. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today.